Hey, what's up? John McMillan, Sea Store Secrets here. Uh, just wanted to share another thought with you today. Um, I want to talk to you about three traps that I'm seeing a lot of Sea Store owners falling into daily. Um, the first trap is um, thinking that price is absolutely the most important thing. Now, don't get me wrong, price is important. I mean, if I'm buying uh, an item for $10 and you're buying it for 20, that's a big gap. But what I see a lot of people focused on and getting all tore up on is let's just talk about candy, for example. Um, in, in candy, sometimes there can be a dollar difference, $2 difference, maybe four or $5 difference I've seen. Um, but what you're really looking at is if you look at unit cost, you're not selling that candy by the box, you're selling it by the unit. So anytime you're selling an item, you're buying it by the case and selling it by the unit. At the end of the day, when you get into big dollar amount differences, yeah, that's a problem. That, that, that's where you get people who aren't competitive. And so it is an issue, it is something you need to look at. But in my 18 years in the C-Store industry, what I'm seeing is that most of the time with an item like candy, for example, you're talking about dollar differences in the box of candy, but most of the time, not even a penny difference in the unit. So if you're focused on candy price, and let's just say on a standard candy bar, you're paying 66 cent, I don't know what the, the cost is, I'm sure it's pretty close to that right now. But if you're paying 66 cent and you're gonna argue with somebody over a buck or two on a case of, of Snickers so that you can be paying 65.5 cent, what are we doing? What, are, what? Why are we wasting that time? If you negotiate on a 48 count box of candy to save a half a penny a bar or even a penny a bar, what have you really gained? You gained 48 cent. You gained 48 cent. And how long did you have to argue and fuss and fight over a dollar or two a box and save 48 cent. Is the time really worth it? If you will just focus on selling more product, you will actually make more than the time you waste on arguing over half a penny. So that's the first trap that I'm seeing a lot of folks fall into. The second trap is focusing on bad customers and changing your business for bad customers. Let's just be honest. Not every person in this world is good. They're not. There's bad people among everybody, among every religion, among every race, among every ethnicity, any name you can think of of where you have categorized people. There's good and bad. The key is you cannot change your philosophy and how you run your business and the way you do things based off of those bad people because once you do that, you are going down a path to where you're no longer paying attention to the good customers and you're solely focused on the bad customers. Who makes you the most money and who overwhelmingly is the majority of the population? The majority of the population is gonna do the right thing. The majority of the population is good. And the laws that we follow in this country are mainly focused and written for the people who are gonna break them which are few and far between. And so I'm not gonna get into a big debate of the population of prisons and all that stuff. But when you look at the people coming in and out of your store, unless your entire retail strategy is drawing bad people in, and there are those out there. There are, there are C stores that maybe unknowingly have focused on bad customers. So unless that's you, if you will focus on the good customers, you will bring more good customers in. And I will give you a little tip on that. If you look at the clientele of the people that are coming into your C-Store and who you're making money off of, are you making money and profit off of good customers or bad customers? Are you focused on selling volume items to bad customers or are you so focused on selling volume items to good customers? So you think about that. What is it that bad customers want? And when I say bad customers, I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying, I'm just, what I'm saying is, is 
if you're shutting down your restrooms because people are going to come in and vandalize them, you're probably attracting bad customers. So you need to shift your focus, look at your retail philosophy, look at the strategies within your C-store and make a change, right? Clean your store up, do some things that will attract high profit, high paying, good customers. The third trap is just having no retail strategy whatsoever or thinking you do. That goes back to what I was just saying. That's why I want to bring this third trap in. Going back to what types of customers are coming in, look at your store from a macro level. Look at what does it look like on the outside? What does it look like on the inside? What items am I focused on? What items am I pushing? What items am I trying to sell the most of? And within that, you will find your retail strategy and you will identify why you have the clientele that you do. For example, I know that vaping and all these flavors and all this stuff is popular. But how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? When you look at successful large chains, they have some of these items, but they aren't trying to be the lowest, the most cost effective. They aren't trying to have a gazillion flavors and everything that you need. They're taking the high end, you know, four or five popular flavors and they're selling those so that they have it. And they're keeping their focus on coffee, food, um, Things that'll make money in their retail strategies, clean restrooms, those things. That's what the, the successful stores are focused on. So you have to ask yourself, are you lacking a retail strategy? Have you focused your retail strategy on attracting customers that really aren't gonna buy high profit items? And again, I'm not gonna get into debates. I know that there's money to be made in these vapes and e-cigs or whatever you call them. I don't know, I don't even use them, but if you really want to serve your customers at the highest level, you have to start focusing on the high profit items that create loyalty. You see, when you focus on these vapes and these e-segs that are price driven, who's got the cheapest, who's got the most flavors, you don't create a loyalty unless you stay the cheapest. And if you stay the cheapest, you think about that, that's a race to the bottom. There's only gonna be one 100% lowest price person. Everybody else is gonna be fighting over pennies and dollars, which is goes back to once again, what we were talking about in the first trap that people fall into is focusing on price. All these are interconnected. Does that sound like you? Does that sound like how you're running your C-store? Because if that is, you're falling into some traps that aren't gonna create a future for your business. Something that I talk about within C-Store Secrets all the time, I want you to succeed, I want you to make money, I want you to make more money than you've ever made and have more customers than you've ever had. But in order to do that, you've gotta start evaluating your C-Store. You gotta start evaluating your, your strategy as a C-Store owner and a business operator. And look at other ways to make money and compete, okay? And I've, I may have told this story before, but once again, I had a C-Store owner uh, over in near the Bowling Green, Kentucky market. Uh, actually, uh, not actually in the market, not actually in town, but in that area. And uh, there were plans to build a big giant convenience store that, that is focused on food service, that has loyalty to their coffee program. And I told this owner, I said, you've got to step these things up. You've got to focus on coffee. Um, you've got to focus on your restrooms. There's things you've got to focus on. And if you don't, if they build that store, it's going to hurt you. And so far right now, we're in that transition phase where that store's been open. It, it, that big store, that large store did get built. And so now we're just trying to, I'm, I'm waiting and watching. I gave the guy the, uh, the advice and it doesn't look like he took it. And so now we're going to see what happens. And and if that store closes, I'll be, I'll be sure to share that with you guys so that you can see it. But I wanted to share these three traps with you. So the first trap is thinking that price is the most important. The second trap is focusing on bad customers. And the third trap is lacking strategy within your C-store, whether it's retail strategy, whatever it is, lacking strategy in how you're gonna operate. If that sounds like you, if you've fallen into those three traps, 
then the only starting point that I can offer you right now is to go to cstoresecretsbook.com, get a copy of the book, and let's talk, let's chat. Uh, you'll, you'll find links to my private Facebook group. Um, you can also purchase a digital copy as well as the C Store Secrets Lifetime Membership. Um, I'm trying to do everything that I can to keep bringing you content to help you make money, to help you survive, to help your future be in the business that you're in if you enjoy this business. That's where I want you to be. That's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about helping you. Um, if there's anything I can do, please reach out. Look me up. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram. I'm on all the social media platforms pretty much. I'm not on TikTok or any of those, you know, Pinterest or any of those. I, I don't have any interest in those right now. But I just want to share this message with you once again and just I can't say it enough that I want to see you succeed and I want to help you succeed in any way that I can. So if this sounds like you, if this sounds like you've fallen into these traps, you know, get get connected with me somehow. Look me up, get into my private Facebook groups. Let's chat and let's find ways to help you succeed. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully you'll reach out. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to help you grow your business. I'll see you soon.